There are some 14,000 genes that go on to build a fly, but the process starts with the toolkit. These toolkit genes tell other genes where to put the head, the tail, all the limbs, and antennae. A problem in one of these genes during development can transform a creature into a catastrophe, and it gets even stranger. Toolkit genes don't just exist in flies. They're in a huge variety of animals, including humans. That's why there is such similarity in the embryos of a fly, a mouse, an elephant, and a human. Despite how different they'll look as adults. A similar kind of recipe underlies the development of bodies as different as those of sea anemones and humans. I mean, that's really remarkable, that a, a version of the same recipe can build bodies that are so utterly different. The finished product may vary. Fins, feathers, or fingers. But like distinctive cars, underneath the paint job, the genetic chassis is the same. It's a new way to look at nature's bodybuilding as if there's a tool shop inside each of us, using a similar set of genes to make parts and appendages in very different organisms. Creatures and their body parts aren't invented from scratch. They evolve when their genetic networks are modified by ancient toolkit genes. Evolution of form is a matter of teaching very old genes new tricks. If you take a look at the difference between a mouse and a cat, the difference is not new types of cells, but change in organization. Somewhere along the line, those instructions were modified, not in a way that scrambled them, but in a way that gave subtle changes to lead to the differences between organisms. Of course, not every organism can stack up against the environment. The genetic toolkit builds bodies that are, at best, hopeful possibilities. Fossil beds are littered with one-hit wonders, evolutionary experiments that prove to be maladapted dead ends. Evolution has taken millions of twists and turns. How did toolkit genes that made an ancient worm get reconfigured to eventually make the parts that make us? Our hands, our hearts, our upright naked bodies, and ultimately, the brilliant brain in our heads.